Hello everyone, this is Jalapeno, and welcome to the next installment of the EVCraft Business Let's Play tutorial series. Today we are going to do something different. Um, basically, we are going to uh, start building an MJ power source, MJ being basically build craft energy. Um, as you may remember, we currently use uh, industrial craft energy, which is nice, it works, but it's incredibly expensive to produce, and most of the mods out there actually use MJ. So uh, typically once I've got my initial uh, resource generation and uh, ore processing in motion, I'd like to move to MJ so then I can actually start uh, you know, moving on to some of the more complicated and fun mods. Um, we do have power boxes which does allow conversion between EU and MJ, but it's actually extremely expensive. It was bad before, but in our most recent update it's gotten even worse it requires an MFSU and just to kind of show you what that entails just for the MFSU requires uh, Lapitron crystals which all require um, advanced circuits which require tons of diamonds and redstone and stuff like that but you need six of those you need an MFE which also requires 16 diamonds a uh, more redstone tons of iron it's it's just a nightmare um, and to produce MJ, it's actually pretty simplistic, fairly cheap, and uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it's a personal preference, but I'm going to show you how to do this stuff too, um, just in case you want to do it this way, as opposed to going through the huge resource uh, hog that Industrial Craft is. Um, we are going to be working with a mod today called Ender IO, which uh, is a relatively new mod for me. I haven't really played with it too much, but uh, it has a lot of interesting, neat features. The first of which is a sterling generator, which more or less functions like the standard industrial craft generator, except it produces uh, MJ energy. Uh, as you can see here, I already have a little bit in here. This 6400 MJ is what I got from burning one piece of coal coke. Um, it's an equal conversion between MJ and EU. But the thing works perfectly fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to make is called an alloy smelter. And the reason why I haven't already done this is because I want to show you um, a little something with the recipe to make sure you don't you know, make any mistakes or wonder why this isn't working. You will recall that in uh, Applied Energistics, most of the times when you make a recipe, the... Um, the system will automatically uh, know when you're... Uh, need an item that could be used with something else. For example, uh, if you need to make wood planks, uh, you might put oak wood planks in the recipe, but it will know to use pretty much any type of wood if it can't find oak planks. And uh, as you can see here, same thing with uh, copper. You know, we've got a few, di we only have one copper spawning in the world, but if you're playing on single player, you might uh, have multiple different types you can use. But there is something you need to pay attention to here. Um, it actually allows different types of stone bricks to be used in the recipe. There's normal ones, mossy ones, chiseled ones uh, can be used. With When you make this selection here, it won't alternate between them if you don't have the items. Meaning that if I have a chiseled block here and the mossy stone brick here, I have to have these particular items in order to make an alloy smelter with the auto crafter. Now, chisel stone blocks are a real pain, and mossy stone bricks, they're not as bad, but they're still, you know, much more complicated to do than just your average stone brick. So, in a situation like this, you want to make sure you're using the cheapest and easiest to acquire material just to ensure, you know, you don't run into any complications. So now that we've done that, we should be able to build our alloy smelter. And there we go. And I believe I can actually just put these right next to each other if I'm really lucky. There we go. And it's starting to pop up. Now an alloy smelter basically will take two components and will melt it into a third component. So for example, the next item that we want to make is a capacitor bank, which is effectively uh, 
the energy storage device uh, for MJ. Now this is actually a really nifty device, meaning it's multi-block. Um, so I can create one, place it down, and it stores some energy. I can make another one, put it right next to it, and it combines into an even larger battery source. So it's not going to be two unique ones, it's just going to be one that's double the size. Um, but you will notice in the uh, in the recipes for the capacitors, you need electrical steel. Electrical steel is produced by having a silicon and a coal on either side here, and an iron at the top, which then creates the electrical steel. So this is actually going to take a little bit of work. Uh, silicon is produced in a sag mill, so we are actually going to produce a sag mill first. A sag mill basically is Ender IO's answer to uh, macerator. It works a little differently and I have actually heard really good things about this device. I haven't used it myself um, but I have heard it's a little bit better at finding materials a little faster, easier on the energy, so we're gonna give it a shot. Just kind of see how it works out for us. I'll put it on the other side here. And now it's filling up with energy. I'm going to need to toss some more fuel in there. Alright, so if uh, we remember correctly, we need to make silicon, which I believe was obtained from redstone ore. There's got to be another item. We can actually get it from sand as well. So, since uh, we don't have some touch or redstone ore, we are going to use some of our sand. And we'll see how this produces. Now, if I remember reading that correctly, it actually uses a fair amount of MJ. Um, oh, I guess we can use clay as well. Potentially produce stuff too. Well, clay block, which uh, it seems like it's a little too much effort. But you'll notice with sand, 720 MJ versus these two, which are less than half of that. So it's a lot of power it consumes just to make one silicon. So we're not going to make too many of these. electrical steel and we're going to need plenty of these we need uh, we need two to make one double layered capacitor but because we need four capacitors a vast virus database has been updated um, because we're going to have basically four capacitors there uh, we're actually going to need eight electrical steel which means we need eight of these silicons so I'm actually going to have to add some more Oh, and it doesn't happen every time either. Alright, well, we'll let that go for a little while. And uh, in the meantime, we will go ahead and make one of the electrical steels. And I believe coal was the other item. Take some of that. And might as well dump this all into the generator. Pull on one side, we'll put the iron up top here, and we'll put a one piece of silicon here. So, in theory now, it is not working, which means that I messed up the recipe. There we go. I just had the uh, items reversed. You have to make sure you put the silicone on the one side, the coal on the other, and put the iron in at last. Don't put it in before the fuels. And that will solve the problem. How's our sand going here? And uh, there's one other item that I want to make if I uh, have the materials to do it, to show you in this, is um, a reservoir. 
Uh, the reservoir requires, you know, components that we're pretty much familiar with except for fused quartz, which is made solely from smelting another quartz, which is really nice because we have plenty of that. And now if you'll recall, um, right now we use a couple of uh, rain tanks to collect precipitation to uh, put water into our ore washer. The reservoirs actually work as an infinite water source that will eliminate me having to rely on the weather and not have to have a uh, large number of different machineries. Uh, you know, like I can use a pump and piping and stuff like that, but for whatever reason, I just don't, uh, I don't appreciate it as much as being able to use the reservoir. Um, and it's really not too expensive. I mean, when you're talking eight nether quartz, more or less, to make your, uh, fused, your fused quartz, it really isn't that much of a bad recipe. Alright, well, we don't have more silicone at this time, so we'll take this out. I guess I'll need four fuse quartz altogether. But in any case, while that's working, I'll uh, create the recipes for these as well. Typically, I at this point in the game, I try to avoid actually crafting anything manually if I can, uh, simply because you know I've created the pattern for glass, I've created the pattern for cauldrons now. Now, if ever anything in any mod ever requires glass panes or uh, cauldrons. It, it'll now be auto-crafted, so it just, for me, makes sense to do things that way. So, we need four uh, reservoir tanks. We won't have the items to make it yet. There's two fuse quartz. And then we just need two more. We're going to need some tin ingots too, which uh, I guess I've smelted it all down. So I'll just go ahead and do some of this now as well, just to make our lives a little easier. Fuse quartz down, and now we should have our, uh, our reservoirs. All right, so now to use these, I'm actually going to go ahead and down. 
So this uh, graphical glitch here, normally it's completely clear. The graphical glitch just sometimes happens for some people. Uh, it doesn't affect the ability to use the thing. I just don't... It's just something that happens at the moment. Uh, it's just something we'll have to live with until they find a way to fix that graphical glitch. All right, so then the last component is we actually need to fill the reservoir, which requires two water buckets. And just dump one in, and dump one in. And then it'll fill up automatically on its own, and now it's ready to supply infinite water. So we'll toss another fluid pipe down here. Now, ideally, I'd want to be using a gate, but I haven't actually set up the, uh, the the pipe gates yet, or the ability to make them, I should say. So for now, we are actually just still going to stick with using a redstone engine. And we'll pop that down. And there we go. And you will see the water level drop a little bit. Um, it does, which does make this limit how much water you can draw at any given point in time, but it refills fairly quickly. The only time you're going to have an issue is if you have a lot of water consistently being drained from it, in which case, if that happens, just build a second reservoir. Uh, all right, I'm going to wait for uh, us to finally get the silicon, and then I'll be back. Alright, so I turned around, sucked it up, and made a stack of my clay into clay blocks, and I'm actually getting silicon way, way faster. So, uh, while sand is definitely doable, it just doesn't really seem to make sense to rely on it for silicon. It just costs too much energy, and, uh, and the percent of getting silicon from it is actually really low. Clay, it's a 40% chance that uh, every time it burns through a block, I will get uh, for silicon, and I actually have a potential to get half the clay from that block back. Uh, I'm not sure what clay dust is used for. Dust apparently can be moved, changed into silicon dioxide, which I have no idea what that's useful for. Um, it's probably uh, an industrial craft component because it runs in the uh, centrifuge, but for now we really don't care about that. But we have the silicon that we need, so we are going to uh, dump that into the system. Oh, one of the other nice things I did is I made myself an ender pouch, which uh, it's similar um, to the ender chest and how it operates. The only difference is I actually have it linked up with this chest, so it basically counts as a portable ender chest. To uh, link it up, I unfortunately don't have... Uh, well, I'll link it up to this one. Um, if you hold shift and click um, the right mouse button on the chest, you'll notice your bag will change and it's kind of hard to see, but you'll notice the coloring. It's blue, white, blue, which matches the coloring of the uh, of the combination here. In addition, on the top of the bag, there's a little a blue uh, diamond icon, which indicates it's my privatized version. And I'm going to come back over to my white one here, shift right click again, and now it's still a private lock because it's got the diamond on it, but it's white, white, white. So now what happens is I well, I could see if there was anything in here, so if for whatever reason my chest was overflowing, I'd be able to spot it anywhere that I happened to be. But I can also, now, no matter where I am, like I could be over here uh, digging and go, oh, well, I got some redstone, I don't need it. I can dump it in there, and it will go into my network. There we go. So it basically uh, works as a, as, as a portable dumping bag into your network no matter where you are even if you're in another dimension so with that being said uh, we still need our electrical steel so I actually need that silicon back all right and actually let's get some more iron okay 
So now if you'll remember, we want to put the coal on the one side, we want to put the silicon on the other, and the iron ingots up front. And I'm actually going to make a fair number of these, since uh, it seems to be used in quite a few, uh, quite a few different things. And uh, I'll wait for the seven or eight of these to smelt, and I'll be back. All right, so I uh, finished smelting the electrical steel. I have made my capacitor bank, and I'm just going to show you more or less how it works. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, with the single generator, it's not actually generating that much energy right now, uh, but it will store up over time, and uh, and then I'll be able to set things up so that it'll output from here to the rest of my network. Um, the nice thing, even though it's going to be hard to see because, you know, it's going to take forever for this to fill up at the moment, but uh, this is actually a little uh, energy gauge, so I always have a visual representation available to me of really how much energy I have compared to an industrial craft where I have to actually come over here and open up the interface to see it. Um, there are some things you can do in industrial craft to have visual representations too, but this just comes built right in with the block, so that's nice. And uh, I don't have the resources to build one quite yet, but uh, as I said, if you uh, actually stack uh, capacitor blocks, they will actually grow in size. So uh, you'll be able to actually have double capacity and if looks like one block it just doesn't look like six different blocks just stacked on top of each other so um, that's effectively it for now I'm going to uh, probably create a few more generators uh, start getting this thing charged up and then we're gonna start building our first uh, Minecraft uh, uh, or buildcraft machines to uh, start moving on to some of the more enjoyable mods that's Jalapeno signing off take it easy